all right what's going on guys welcome back to another breakdown here we got passage five this is a bb passage okay i'm going to show you guys how to read this passage how to answer the questions where to highlight and how to really do the passage in the most efficient and quickest time possible okay a lot of you guys have timing issues this is how you do it okay you want to read at a pace that's a regular pace but just a little slower okay the little slower allows you to hone in on the details all right not only are you reading it slower to hone in on the details but you're highlighting it as well at specific points and when you do that when you combine those two and use the three-step process that i use for answering the questions you will notice that the mcat is easy it's a proven path it's a wash rinse repeat that's what it is. Do not overcomplicate it. All right. So before I show you everything, I want you guys to do the passage on your own first. All right. See where you went wrong. See where you went right. I'm going to scroll down here. This is the whole passage. Okay. Pause it when you need to read that. This is the first question. The second question. Third question. And fourth question. That is it. Hopefully you guys get them all right. Remember, this is a TPR exam, this is going to be harder than your regular AMC FLs. When you're ready, let's begin. Gastrulation is a key developmental process and involves the formation of the three primary germ layers. I knew this already, so I'm not going to highlight. It requires large amounts of cell migration in a process known as epithelial mesenchymal transition, EMT. I'm going to highlight this so I know what EMT is. This is particularly essential for the formation of the mesoderm, the middle germ layer. Okay, so EMT makes mesoderm. Simple. An EMT can be easily studied in a lab because epithelial and mesenchymal cells are very different. Okay, they're different. How are they different? When grown in the lab, epithelial cells form layers and grow closely together in clusters. Okay. The cells typically have a cobblestone appearance and are closely joined to their neighboring cells. Importantly, these cells also have polarity with an apical surface and a basal lateral surface. Okay, so I'm going to highlight what makes these epithelial cells different. What do they make them different? They form layers. What else? Clusters. What else? Cobblestone appearance. What else? Uh, polarity. Join to the neighboring cells, and then the apical basal uh, lateral surface. All right. So if the question asks, I can go ahead and quickly look and see what the difference is. Mesenchymal cells look different. How do they look different? They do not form an organized cell layer, have no polarity, contact their neighbors only focally, and are spindle shaped. They're spindle shaped. All right. Mesenchymal cells are precursor cells that develop into connective tissue blood vessels, and lymphatic tissue. Epithelial and mesenchymal cells also express different and mutually exclusive protein markers. Mesenchymal cells express vimentin as an intermediate filament, and cadherin as an adhesion protein, and make fibronectin, which is exported to this extracellular matrix. In contrast, epithelial cells express cytokarins, and E cadherins and adherin cell junctions. Okay. A lot of details here that we're highlighting. It's okay. You don't need to remember every single one so far. Okay. When they give you a lot of details, um, the question would usually help you out here because they know it's a lot or they'll force you to remember it. And if you highlight it, you can quickly go back to it. All right. Let's keep going. Gastrulation starts in a region of the embryo known as the organizer. All right, whenever I see something coming up, it tells me some new information that I've never seen before, I zone in on the details. All right. Over the last 20 years, it has been found that the organizer region expresses several transcription factors at high levels. One of these is a protein called gusicoid. Okay, gusicoid. That's a transcription factor, which is coded for by the GSC gene. Gusicoid is an EMT promoting transcription factor that plays a major role in gastrulation. All right, Gusicoid is an EMT promoting transcription factor, guys. That's how it is. That's what it does. All right. Uh, 
This was first shown the frog embryo in a series of experiments. Okay, now we're given the experiments. Experiments are important. Always, always, always. Zone in. Let's go. Frog embryos were isolated at the 32 cell stage, where each of the cells is called the blastomere. The GSC transcript, generated from cDNA, was injected into a blastomere on the ventral side. Okay, the ventral side here. So what do we have? We have this GSC transcript injected into the ventral side to cause overexpression of the gusicoid protein. All right, this caused the formation of an abnormal blastocyp, blastopore lip on the ventral side of the embryo. Normally, one blastolip forms on the dorsal side, and this is where mesoderm formation and gastrulation cell movements originate. So what did this do? by inserting the GSC transcript into the ventral side. It caused a blastolip to form, okay? So we have two blastopores, one on the ventral, one on the dorsal when we do this experiment. Frog embryos were isolated at the 32 cell stage and GSC was overexpressed in the dorsal blastomere, okay, in the dorsal side. Let's see what happens. Similar to experiment one, normally the blastopore lip has two cell populations marginal zone cells which involulate and contribute to elongation of the body axis so marginal cells are for elongation and deep zone cells which call forward to form the leading edge of the mesoderm so deep zone cells form leading edge cool overexpression of gsc in a dorsal blasphemer changes marginal zone cells to deep zone cells overall these embryos have migratory cells that's what happens that's what happens okay when we inject it at the dorsal side we get this change when we inject it at the ventral side we get a whole new blastopore lip that's the figure you don't look at the figure only when the question asks for it so that's it guys that's the passage we now know what's going on and we have a good understanding these questions should be easy now. The gusicoid protein would contain which of the following? Well, what's a gusicoid protein? They told us that it's a transcription factor. Transcription factors are proteins. They need to go to the nucleus for a transcription. So they need an NLS and they need a DNA binding motif so they can bind to the DNA and recruit RNA polymerase for a transcription. That is how they work. 23 is B. Which of the following is true about the embryo using the experiments? The embryo would have to be post gastrulation. No, it would not have to be post. Okay, this is pre. Gastrulation is when you go from the blastocyst and make those three germ layers. Okay, gastrulation, you make the three germ layers. This is before we even have the mesoderm. We're trying to make, we're trying to make the layers now. So this would be pre gastrulation. Okay. So this says post, and this says post. The embryo would have to be pre-gastrulation, and the molecule injected into the blasphemies would have to be single-stranded RNA without introns. Okay, that makes sense. We don't want introns. We just want to um, go ahead and transcribe what we need to. Okay. We don't want to deal with the splicing and all that. The embryo would have to be post grad we have to be pre gastrulation and the molecule and genital blast we have to be double stranded DNA without introns. I don't think double stranded DNA has introns like that. Also they told us that's a transcript. Transcript RNA. Twenty four is B. It's that simple guys. Why do the experiments in the passage support a role for GSC and ENT? Wow, great question. I hope you guys get this one right because this is MCAT question for you guys, okay? The formation of a second blastopore lip would require cell proliferation, which is consistent with the role of GSC as a transcription factor. Mm. I it could do proliferation. Mainly, the GSC helps to make the mesoderm layer. Okay, that's what the GSC does. It helps gastrulation at the organizer region. Okay. And it forms that lip. That's what that lip does. But that's not what GSC's main job is. 
Okay. Let's look at B. Changes from crawling migratory cells to involuting marginal zone cells would require changes in cellular transcription. Let's see. No, they change the marginal zone cells to deep zone cells. Not okay. In both experiments, yeah, I would be. I would say if we're looking at the role of GSC, we want to use both experiments. That's what we want to use. Okay, in both experiments, GSC overexpression induced increased cell movement and changes in the early steps of mesoderm formation. That's a great conclusion of the experiments. That's exactly what it did. GSC overexpression caused changes in the blastopore lip, including the number of lips and their architecture where formation of the inner germ layer starts. Okay. Only in experiment one does GSC make that extra lip. All right. In experiment two, it doesn't make the extra lip. It just changes the cells from zone to deep. That's it. Okay. So D is wrong. We have A and C. This is telling us that GSC main job is to um, proliferate cells. This is telling us GSC's overexpression leads to the changes in forming the mesoderm. What's a better answer, guys? It's obvious that it's C, but if you're wondering what is a better answer, there's three things that I go by. Number one, is it more specific the answer? Number two, okay, is it um, evidently backed up? Okay, is there evidence that points to it? And number three is, is it what the MCAT is testing? Okay, if, it, if it's testing about freaking, I don't know, like um, a specific, hold on, I'm trying to think here. Okay, if it's testing about something like shoes and how good the shoes are, or if it's asking you about like the steps in a Michael addition reaction, Okay, they're testing about Michael addition here because Michael addition is something you need to know for that cat. All right, so those are the three things I use. And this one, it's pretty obvious that it's C. Okay, it's more of what the passage is going about. The passage is testing about this, so we're going to go with C. Which of the following is most similar to EMT? Cancer metastases, where a tumor niching cell leaves a bulk tumor, migrates, and settles in a new niche. This sounds good. Okay, because EMT is the epithelial mesenchymal transition. All right, we're becoming a new cell and we're migrating somewhere else. Okay, these cells migrate to form the mesoderm and these cells undergo different changes. You know, they have a lip and all this stuff and they do that to become the mesoderm. So in cancer metastases, that tumor cell is migrating it's going to a new niche and it's forming something else. It's forming cancer. Okay. Like a cancer in the mammary glands, I'd say that initiating cell would go and crawl to somewhere else. And when it crawls somewhere else, it's going to form cancer there. So I like a, the nephron where epithelial cell is surrounded by, no, this has nothing to do with migratory or making new cells. Neutrophils squeezing out of capillary clefts. This is migratory. However, it has nothing to do with how um, we have proliferation and replication. We're forming a new layer. We're forming something new as well as migrating. So this just tells me migrating. Peristalsis of the gastrointestinal tract and the resulting migration. Again, that tells me that we're migrating, which is good, but it doesn't tell me that we're forming new cells. Okay, and new layers and stuff like this. So D is wrong. Best answer process elimination is A. And that's how you do it, guys. That's how you get them all right. If you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, click the link below and join MCAT University. It, I, you will hit your target score in MCAT University. It's guaranteed, no matter what. And I will make sure you hit your target score half the time. Okay? So I'll see you guys in there. Click on the link in the comment section. Fill out the application. Book an interview. And if it seems like we're a good fit, I'll ask you to join MCAT University. This is how you make the questions easy. That's how you do it, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.